Our scripture reading today comes from Mark chapter 10, starting in the 13th verse. Hear now what God is saying to God's people. People were bringing the little children to him in order that he may touch them. The disciples spoke, spoke sternly to them. But when Jesus saw this, he was indignant and he said to them, Let the little children come to me. Do not stop them. For it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. Truly I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. And he took them in his arms. He laid his hands on them and he blessed them. This is the word of God, the people of God. Thanks be to God. If you've spent any time around children, you know that they have a tendency to say things that are rather surprising. And of course, this is often a humorous thing. One of my mom's favorite stories about my childhood is from when I was about three years old. When we were having dinner with some family friends, I, being the talkative child I was, kept trying to interrupt the conversation. And my dad, who was also on the talkative side, said to me, Bethany, please wait until I'm finished. And I looked up with him with my big brown eyes and I said, but dad, you're never finished. <laughs> the surprising honesty of three-year-old Bethany is not unlike the honesty of many children. Kids have a way of saying the thing that surprises everything, everyone. The somewhat socially unacceptable, but it's okay because they're so darn cute thing. Our gospel text today is a story about children. This story, only three short verses in the Gospel of Mark and two verses in the other Gospels, is easy to overlook. It's easy to think, well, Jesus loves the children. That's cute and very nice. But the simple act of Jesus, welcoming the children to his side, is actually a rather surprising one. And when Jesus says that the kingdom of God belongs to the children, well, that would have been a shock, even a scandal, to his audience. To put our story into perspective, it is helpful to look at the entirety of chapter 10 of Mark. Mark 10 begins in verse 2 by saying, Some Pharisees came to test him. They asked, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? Now this Pharisee, he's not asking Jesus this question in a spirit of learning and growth. Rather, the Pharisee was trying to trick Jesus, to get Jesus to be caught up in his own words, to make Jesus look like a fool. And as Jesus is answering their question, he is approached by the children. And the disciples try to turn the little children away, and Jesus welcomes them. And then, right after Jesus interacts with the children, he tells a parable of a rich young man who has kept all the laws, who wants to inherit eternal life. But the rich young man is unable to do the one thing Jesus asks, to give up his worldly possessions. So here we have Jesus talking about the law, the thing that everyone is so concerned about. And in the midst of this, he welcomes the children. The children who aren't concerned about marriage or wealth, but who simply desire to be close to Jesus. Our text says that people are bringing little children in order that he may touch them. And Jesus says the ones that these are the ones who the kingdom of God belongs to. It's like Jesus is more concerned about this new kingdom the kingdom of God, than he is about who, excuse me, than he is about what is and isn't allowed. 
It's like Jesus is saying, you want to trip me up, you want to trip each other up, you care so much about the law, but you are missing what is unfolding right in front of you. You are missing that a new kingdom, the kingdom of God, is in your midst. And this new kingdom that Jesus speaks of, it is unlike any kingdom that anyone present has ever known. In order to understand how shocking, how scandalous, how unexpected Jesus' proclamation that the kingdom of God is for the little children would have been, we must understand two things. That this word kingdom, what this word kingdom means and the role that children played in the society of Jesus' day. The word kingdom is a word that is closely tied with political power, with the power of empire. The word kingdom could be used to describe a land that was ruled over, but it was more a word that was a word about power. In the Greek, when the word kingdom was used, the power of a king would come to mind first, second to the image of the actual physical territory. People expected a king to be all-powerful, to rule with an iron fist, to conquer lands. Kings were with great wealth, with mighty armies, with the most, that ruled with the most power. Those were the kings and the kingdoms that were to be desired, to be expected, to be honored. So when Jesus says that it is the children that are the kingdom of God, that is surprising. Children in those days were considered to be the lowest status of society, practically invisible. They weren't cute like we think of kids today. And little children who couldn't even tend to the land or go to battle, they were seen as even less valuable to society. So it's actually not that surprising when Jesus when the disciples speak sternly to them, trying to keep them away from Jesus. A kingdom that belongs to the children, not to the keepers of the law, not to the kings, not to the most righteous, is a scandal. This kingdom that Jesus points to, the kingdom that is right, that is unfolding right in their midst of questions about law and who's righteous and is not, they can't see it because they can't see the children. But Jesus wants them to see it. He wants them to see this new kingdom, the kingdom that is rapidly approaching the king who is right in front of them, caring for the children. This new kingdom, the kingdom of God, is unlike any kingdom of their world or our world. The tenderness that Jesus shows to the children taking them into his arms, laying his hands on them, blessing them, being present with them. That is a kingdom that disrupts the status quo. This picture of tenderness, of Jesus caring, being present, is a, king, is a kingdom that is as surprising as a child at the dinner table embarrassing her parents. For no mighty ruler has time for children no real king is that tender and kind. Fred Rogers, you may know him from the show Mr. Rogers, he said, I'm fairly convinced that the kingdom of God is for the brokenhearted. Rogers points to the scandalous good news that you don't have to be the most powerful, the most righteous, the most anything to be welcomed into the kingdom. That God's kingdom is unfolding in our midst. And that this kingdom, well, it is for you and it is for me. It's a kingdom where you don't have to have all the answers. It's a kingdom that welcomes in the most vulnerable. It's a kingdom that allows us to be our most authentic selves. You have a place in this kingdom, for we are not unlike the children. No matter who you are or what you have done, how messy your life feels, how unpredictable your actions are, what your status is, how righteous you are, you have a place 
in God's kingdom. You have a place in God's kingdom because God looks at you and he calls you God's beloved because you are a precious child of God. So friends, let us be like the little children. Let us boldly approach Jesus, hoping that he might touch our lives, that he might heal us, that he might take us into his arms and love and care for each of us. And let us remember that God's kingdom is for all, that each one of God's beloved are welcomed in, that no one is turned away. And, we, and may we let this good news, that God's kingdom, and may we let that good news, and that God's kingdom come, be on earth as it is in heaven. Amen.